In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, you have instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant it to the same Holy Spirit. We may always be truly wise. Rejoice in his consolation. To the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Santo Niño de Jesus, pray for us. Immaculate Heart of Mary, intercede for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Our spiritual reading for tonight will be again taken from the 40 days reflection on the Lenten season. We will take the subject on fasting and winning our spiritual warfare. Let me start with this uh, Gospel passage. When the bridegroom is taken from them, they will fast. Matthew chapter 9, verse 14. I have a story to tell you on a certain blessed Alexandrina da Cosca. She is a victim soul from Fatima considered by Sister Lucia as the fourth seer of Our Lady of Fatima. And uh, what did she do? Because she fasted intensely. She was able to stop World War III. She was able to drive away the demons that were there trying to incite everybody against one another. Remember the word division comes from the Greek word diabolos. Diabolos means the devil. How did she do it? Well, she fasted for more than 40 days and 40 nights. And this fast will last up to 13 years. How was it done? She fasted only on the Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist was the only sustenance of Blessed Alexandrina the Cosca of Fatima. Of course, after a medical investigation was conducted on her to check whether the fast was authentic, and Dr. Enrico Gomez de Arroyo prepared the official report. In it, he confirmed the tragedy as scientifically inexplicable. He said, it is absolutely certain that during 40 days of being bedridden in hospital, 
the sick woman did not eat or drink, and we believe such phenomenon could have happened during the past months, perhaps the past 13 months, leaving us perplex. However, Alexandrina had a better explanation. She confided to her confessor that our Lord Jesus had told her, you are living by the Eucharist alone because I want to prove to the whole world the power of the Eucharist and the power of my life in souls. We need more than ever victim souls today to stop this pervading war which the globalists are waging in Europe. And what do we need to do? Let us go back to the Gospel. Before his public life, Jesus fasted for 40 days in the desert, after which Jesus wrestled with Satan and became victorious by overcoming Satan three times. Then he clearly announced to the Israelites, If I cast out Satan by the fingers of God, then know that the kingdom of God is close at hand. Why is this so? Because on our way to heaven, our eternal life, our real home forever, Satan will try to stop us with all his might out of hatred and jealousy towards us. If Satan can be conquered by Christ, then there's no more obstacle for anyone in trying to enter God's kingdom, which begins here on earth. As John Paul II reminded us in Evangelium Vitae and in Davo Pastoris Bobis, we have three enemies to wrestle with here on earth. In this church militant, while working for our salvation, number one, Satan. Number two, the Word. And number three, the concupiscence inside us, which is the seven capital sins or the devil inside us. Of these three arch enemies of our soul, Satan is the common denominator. Why? Because the Word is nothing but ruled also by Satan. This is what St. Paul teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, and in other passages. And I quote, Satan is the ruler of the Word. And he repeated this three times in other passages. Hence, the Word with its comfortable lifestyle and lustful pleasure, living like secularist, that is, a life without God, is under Satan's control. The Word is permeated by the spirit of the Antichrist. 1 John chapter 4. Then, the third, which is self-will, is nothing but Satan inside us. St. Mary Magdalene, the Pachi, a mystic. She teaches us that self-will and self-love in us is Satan in human form. As a precaution, St. John Vianney warned us that of the three enemies, the third one is the most dangerous and the most difficult to wrestle with. Why? Because the devil himself is not outside us, but he is inside us. It is the self-will and self-love instead of God's will and God's love with the seven capital sins. They live inside us 
and work day and night to bring us to damnation until our death. There is nothing new under the sun. If it was Satan who tempted Adam and Eve, and they fell, making us lost eternal life and the original justice and holiness, which Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches in 416, namely, one, we lost immortality. Two, perfect natural science. Three, freedom from concupiscence. Jesus came 4,000 years later to redeem mankind from Satan, from sin, hell, and death. Catechism 405 teaches, when Christ redeemed us to open heaven for us, even after baptism, we are still inclined to concupiscence. And Satan and the Word still try to thwart us from entering heaven by leading us to sin. Hence, Jesus reminds us that while he cast out Satan with the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come. Luke eleven twenty. Why did Jesus say in the gospel in Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 15, when the bridegroom is taken away, then, my disciples will fast. That is, all the followers of Christ, all the Christians, they should fast. Why is this so? Jesus said, I know that after I am gone, many will come like fierce wolves to attack you. I know that after my departure, ravening wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock. The Rhyme Bible, Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Jesus therefore warns us and his apostles, keep watch over yourselves and the entire flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds, of the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. To drive the devil and his different minions and disguises trying so hard to destroy souls until the end of times, as shepherds, Jesus empowered his disciples to cast out Satan. Lay people, not just priests, need to be armed with the cross, which is our daily sufferings, turned into victimhood, to be powerful prayer warrior against Satan. Because only through the cross can we cast out Satan. And to be effective, there's a need of fasting. What is the effectivity of fasting in deliverance prayer? The exorcist fasts for three days to 40 days to defeat Satan in exorcism and cast him out of his victim. The church insists on fasting during Lent but mandated it only twice during the 40 days of Lent, as Wednesday and Good Friday. However, John Paul II said, no one forbids us to do fasting voluntarily for 40 days during Lent in imitation of Jesus and thousands of saints, so that we will have the strength to fight our spiritual warfare daily till death with the aid of God. Roman Catechism teaches us, members of the church militant. It is called militant because it wages eternal war with those implacable enemies, the word, the flesh, and the devil. 
And since Satan is not only present during Lent, but throughout our life, we should fast and pray daily, doing works of mercy, so that we are worthy to enter the kingdom of heaven in beatific vision of God for eternity. Heaven is our real home. Our life on earth is just a temporary abode. However, exorcists will have power if they accept their daily crosses daily without complaint. There is a certain uh, saint, Blessed Francesco Palau. He would fast for 40 days on top of the mountain alone. And in his suffering, he converts it into victimhood. So that with the cross, he has power to cast out Satan by the thousands. This is what blessed Palau does before assaulting the devil. He fasts and pray and convert his sufferings as victimhood before exorcism. As a result, he was able to empty psychopathic hospitals and mental hospitals by hundreds of thousands infested patients with deliverance prayer in less than an hour. Unfortunately, the doctors and nurses who lost their jobs brought Blessed Francesco Palau to court and won the case against Monsignor Francesco Palau. Unfortunately, the bishop sided with the doctors and exiled Francesco Palau until he died. Saint Benedict was called by the barbarian king Attila, conqueror of Rome, the king of Europe. After he surrendered to Saint Benedict, whose demons inside him prostrated before Saint Benedict, making the king suffer great seizure and almost killing himself. With a promise to respect the Christians in Rome, Attila agreed to be cast out of his demons by Saint Benedict. After the deliverance, from Satan, King Attila and his possessed vicar were converted into Christianity. After this, King Attila called Saint Benedict the King of Europe. Why? Because he said, if I, King Attila, conquered Europe, it was Benedict who conquered me. In response to the gospel warning in Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 15, let us meditate on the value of fasting, not only to make our Lenten season beneficial to us, but as a help to win our spiritual warfare here on earth. St. Francis of Sales says, fasting is not a virtue. The good and the bad, as well as the Christians and pagans, they fast. The old philosophers practiced and recommended it. They were not virtuous for that reason, nor did they practice virtue fasting. Fasting becomes virtue when accompanied by conditions which are pleasing to God. It has three requirements. First, we must fast willingly with all our hearts, universally and entirely. St. Bernard said, Fasting was instituted by our Lord as a remedy for our mouth, for the gourmandizing, and for our gluttony. Since sin entered the word to the mouths, the mouth must do penance and being deprived of foods, 
prohibited and forbidden by the church. But the glorious Saint Bernard adds that as it is not our mouth alone which has sinned, but also all our senses, our fast must be general and entire. That is, all the members of our body must fast. For if we have offended God to the eyes, to the ears, to the tongue, the palate, and to our other senses, why should we not make them fast as well? But we must also fast in our soul's power and passions. Yes, even the understanding, the memory, and the will, since we have sinned through body and soul. So this is coming from St. Bernard. And uh, I have this book here of uh, St. Francis, The Sales, The Sermons for Lent. And on page uh, 3, he said, How many sins have entered into the souls, to the eyes, as Holy Scripture indicates in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. That is why they must fast by keeping them lowered and not permitting them to look upon frivolous and unlawful objects. For instance, pornography. And pornography can be three types. One is still. Another one is alive. Another one is paintings. So we have, for instance, movies. We have, for instance, paintings. We have, for instance, live shows which are pornography. St. Francis continues by telling us, the ears, by depriving them of listening to vain talk which serves only to fill our minds with worldly images. The tongue is not speaking idle words, and those which savor the word or the things of the word. And in fact, we have here in the scriptures from St. James chapter 3, verse 6, he says, The tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. The tongue is placed among our members, which defiles the whole body and inflames the wheel of our nature, being set afire by hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of the serpents and of the rest is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But the tongue no man can tame, a restless evil full of deadly poison. We bless God the Father by it, and by it we curse men who are made after the likeness of God. Going back to St. Benedict on the 6th century, he also said, you know, 99% of our sins comes from the tongue. So we fast by being silent throughout the 40 days Lent. We will not sin most of the time. He will sin only 1%. So let's continue with St. Francis. He said, The second condition is never to fast through vanity, but always through humility. The third condition necessary for fasting well is to look to God and to do everything to please Him. Withdrawing within ourselves, to imitation of the great saint. How do you fight our spiritual warfare today? 
Today we know of the globalist plan to digitalize the whole world with the barcode 666 and to reduce the populace who is behind the globalists? It is Satan. He wants to be worshipped like God. The mark or number of the beast, Satan, which the scripture teaches us is 666. And we find this in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. So let us therefore take a serious look on our fasting on bread and water this Lenten season. Although, as you already mentioned, canon law mandates strict fasting only on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday for those who are 18 to 59 years old. However, everyone is required to do abstinence from meat starting 14 years old this Lent. Our Blessed Virgin Mary reminded Blessed Francesco Palau, the exorcist, not to be frightened by the red dragon with the seven heads or ten horns. Just aim on the main head, Satan, and the whole beast with its seven heads and ten horns will collapse. How do we do this? This Lent, let all good Catholics, by aiming this 40 days Lent, their prayers, fasting, and deliverance prayer against Satan in the big government, the big church, and using many rosary rallies throughout the cities of the world and consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, adjoined with the Sacred Heart of Jesus, doing reparation prayer with the acronym CORCARE, which is Confession, Adoration, Rosary, and the Eucharistic Sacrifice to the Mass. If we have sufficient number of people to do this, surely Jesus will come, ushered by the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to crush the devil, 666, of the globalists and the communists. The salvation of the world rests only in Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But they will have to depend on victim souls. That means those who use their fast in order to convert them into reparation to victimhood as a cross and pray for God's help to cast out Satan and hopefully with prayer, fasting, and victimhood, which is our cross. Like what many people did, we could also defeat the enemies of the church and the state in our days. Also in Brazil, with 40 days prayer and fasting, concluding with a rosary rally across Sao Paulo City in 1975, communism fell apart. How? How? With Catholicism still strong in the country, Cardinal de Barros Camara told people to the weekly radio address that by following the directives of Our Lady of Fatima regarding prayer and fasting, Brazil could overthrow the communist threat. A woman, Dona Amelia Bastos immediately formed a group called Campaign of Women for Democracy, CAMDE, 
and started to recruit as many people as possible to fast and pray the rosary in large groups to thwart the plan of communist takeover. In the town called Belo Horizonte, a group of 20,000 women reciting the rosary allowed broke up the pro-communist rally. The success of this peaceful protest fed the impetus for the Catholic women to do more. With the help of God and the strong influence of Archbishop Cardinal De Barros Camara, Doña Amelia recruited an amazing 600,000 women to march in Sao Paulo to fast and pray the rosary for peace. They called their protests, March of the Family with God Towards Freedom, under the declaration, Mother of God, preserve us from the faith and suffering of the martyred women of Cuba, Poland, Hungary, and other enslaved nations. And of course, they won. The communists fled. What do we need to do? We have spiritual warfare inside us. We have Satan ruling us with uh, the globalists controlling our lives. We have the communists also trying to overpower us. Well, during this 40 days Lenten season, let us spend this in fasting and praying the rosary. Let us pray the family rosary daily to cast out Satan in our family and in our group led by bishops or cardinals and with the support of courageous lay leaders. Let us organize a rosary rally across the country in prayer and fasting to cast out the devil. Everywhere we go, we have spiritual warfare. Let us always fast and pray, especially this Lenten season, this prayer. Aside from the rosary, Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares to the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, bind into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.